Hi again then guys and welcome to my full breakdown and review of the GT Sport 1.50 paid DLC, the Lewis Hamilton time trial events, and this video is actually serving quite a few different purposes because not only is it my initial thoughts and my review, but it's also an opportunity for those of you who are maybe on the fence about buying it, or maybe you are not going to buy it or just haven't decided yet, you can watch this video, see what kind of times I do, maybe compare yourself if you're on my friends list for instance, and see if it's something that you might want to do. I'm also going to be talking about the rewards that you get, and there is one massive reward for this series that many people don't seem to realize you actually get, and I'm going to say that right now before we get on with the video, because that is if you beat Hamilton in all 10 events, in other words, achieve the diamond trophy every time, or the platinum trophy, whichever one it is that they want to call it, but you get the idea, you not only get the credit cap increased, that actually happens if you get gold, let alone platinums, but even more importantly than that, you get a cash bonus. Because as well as getting cash for every individual event, and this is the part that many people don't realize, you actually win 100 million credits for achieving all of Hamilton's times on all 10 events. Now that sounds fantastic, but trust me, it's easier said than done for most of us, and I have not beaten a single one of his challenges, so spoiler alert. However, it wasn't a spoiler for me, I already knew that I probably wasn't going to. However, I was surprised by how close I was to Hamilton most of the time, and you can see his ghost replay, and it's actually not as far ahead as I would have thought compared to my driving style. And speaking of which, if you would like to challenge me, that is another purpose of this video, because I thought to myself, well, for those people who have downloaded this and maybe find the Hamilton stuff a little bit too challenging, why not challenge me instead? So check out the times in this video. I've put all of the individual lap times in the description below, and you can actually have kind of like a, a sub challenge. But not only is it just for the fun of it, if you can beat each of my times, that guarantees that you will get a gold in all but one of the events. And it's not the event that you might think, you're probably thinking it's the last one, but actually no, it's the second to last, the ninth one on the Nürburgring GP course, because I don't like that circuit, I never have, probably never will, and the difficulty on that one seems different to me, it seems like the lap requirement is a little bit harsher than on all of the others, but maybe that's just me and because I don't like the track. I might go back and try and get a gold on it just to get them all, because as I said, you do get different bonuses. Now speaking of those bonuses, if you get bronze on all of the events, or even just individually, I believe you get 200 grand. So even for that level, that's still a really nice payout, for essentially like a, a two minute lap, if not less. And for those who are maybe wondering, yes, just like the circuit experience events, you can only win the money once. However, if you do beat him and get the 100 million, it's not really like you're going to have an immediate need for more cash. Unless, of course, you go out and buy five high rollers immediately, but that's your problem. <laughs> so for the bronze trophy, you get about 200 grand, I believe it was. For the silver, you get, I believe it's 300 grand. And for the gold, you get a cool 500 grand. But the way the system works is cool, because if you get the gold, you also get rewarded by the previous two prizes as well. So in other words, for every event that you can get a gold on, as I did, all but one at least, you get a million a time. So that's 10 million credits, even without beating Hamilton. And of course, the massive bonus when you do beat Hamilton, that not only do you get another million, so two million per event for the diamond or platinum trophy, but also that cool 100 million credits. However, I will say that for obvious reasons, since the credit cap is also 100 million credits, you need to spend as much of that money as you can before getting your final platinum trophy. Because, of course, otherwise you'll lose millions and millions of credits for no reason, because it will just reset to 100 million and you'll lose the other 10, 20 million that you've earned on top of that. Now, as far as the challenge goes, of course, you can follow along in the video, check out his ghost times, his lap records, the kind of times are written on screen anyway that you've got to aim for. So even if you don't download the DLC, and this is something which I would probably recommend doing actually, check out in your own game, take a stock AMG GT or a, a Sauber C9 and take them on these circuits first. Make sure you stick to racing hard tyres with no tuning whatsoever and see how close to his times you can be. Because that's a pretty good way of gauging if you believe this pack is actually worth buying for you. 
and I would say that's a much better way than just buying it and finding out. And of course I bought it because it's my job, so I'm going to cover it for the channel no matter what. So as far as these events went, I found that by far my least liked was, as is kind of evident by the silver trophy, the Nürburgring GP course. And that's purely personal preference. I'm sure there are other people who found it like the easiest of the ten or something like that. That's always the way. On a couple of the tracks, I was surprised actually by just how close to Hamilton I was, even right from the start in Dragon Trail, I was fully expecting him to be like 5 to 10 car lengths ahead, but it wasn't like that, he was basically just in front of me for most of the time. And of course, different players, different levels, some people have already beaten him handily by like 3 seconds in some cases, but overall I'm happy with what I've done. As I said, I might try and brush up on that single silver, because if you do get all bronze, all silver, all gold, all platinum, you win different vehicles for that. And in case you're wondering, the vehicles that you win, if you get all bronze, then you win the AMG GT3, which many of us have probably already got anyway. If you get all silver, at least, which is what I did, then you get the Sauber C9, which is a pretty nice bonus. If you get all gold, which I am of course one away from, then you get the Mercedes F1 car, which again is a pretty nice bonus. And if you get all platinum, well, for that, you get the Lewis Hamilton Design Special Edition Mercedes Vision Gran Turismo. So it's probably not that different, if different at all, from what I've heard, at least from a regular one, more like a livery or visual update, but I don't own the car. And to be fair, I probably never will, because it's not really worth the effort to me sometimes. I like to get the golds, I'll probably aim for that, but beating Hamilton, yeah, 100 million credits is nice, but... Already from these events, I've got 16 million credits from what I already had saved, plus these, so that's pretty nice for me, at least. And of course, the 100 million is nice, and incidentally, the 100 million credit cap, unless I'm mistaken, is actually unlocked if you do get all golds. So you don't get awarded 100 million, but you gain the ability to earn up to 100 million instead of up to 20. Because of course before it was kind of annoying because you'd earn 20 million, you'd lose whatever was over that if you won more than that in an event, and then you could like buy one high roller and you were bankrupt immediately again. Now I was wondering how exactly I would structure this video, maybe do like a brief breakdown of each individual track, but ultimately I decided that Hamilton's already done enough of that himself in these events, that's kind of the point. He's the faster driver than me anyway, so who really cares? And also, I couldn't really be bothered. <laughs> but overall, you can check out, of course, the full length laps of all of my runs in this video, from Dragon Trail all the way up to the Nordschleifer. I will say that the Nordschleifer event was by far the most fun for me in the Sauber C9, and my one piece of advice for that event, as you'll see on screen, is don't be afraid of traction control, because traction control in that Sauber makes a massive difference. In fact, having my traction control on one allowed me to exit a number of corners faster than Hamilton did even though he was using a manual gearbox and a steering wheel, and I'm on a controller with an auto, and I was still out accelerating him because of that traction control. So there are many people who say, oh, it's not professional to use traction control and ABS and that kind of stuff. That's rubbish. Modern race cars have traction control and ABS. So in short, if you've got a problem with it, go and talk to the actual pros who use it. Ultimately though, I will leave the rest of this video basically silent, just you and the car, so that you can study my times and my lap line if you wish to, if you want maybe a slightly easier challenge than the Hamilton side of things, maybe half a second to a second off that kind of pace. Kind of a, a mini challenge, if you will. But for now, I'll hand it over to my virtual self with no audio accompaniment, so that if you choose to watch the rest of the video as a lap guide, then you can do so. Otherwise, that's the end of the information side of the video. And of course, until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.
a great time.